Uh, let's continue with uh, the fourth part uh, concerning our topic of the cell engine. And in this part, we look about the irreversible cell engine. Irreversible cell injury, as I have said that earlier, uh, the irreversible cell injury is manifested by the cell death. And the cell death can be shown by the three conditions. We have necrosis, infection, and the apoptosis. So we are going to see uh, these uh, three manifestations of the irreversible cell injury. Let's start with the necrosis. Uh, necrosis uh, it can be manifested by the three most uh, conditions. And this we have liquefactive, coagulative, and caseous necrosis. For the case of the liquefactive necrosis, it means that there we call liquefications. It means here liquefications occur in those uh, organs that contain uh, lipids. For example, in the brain, after encountering what we call a, a cerebral infection, here in the brain, that is the area of cerebral infections, this one, the area of cerebral infection. But in this area of cerebral infection, there is a liquefaction part, this one. Here, what we call the liquefactive necrosis. But for the case of coagulative necrosis, a example is in kidney infection. As we see, this is an infected area in the kidney organ. So that is a coagulative necrosis. And this occurs mostly in those uh, hard organs, like the kidney. And in coagulative necrosis, we have to know that the architecture of the, the, architecture of the affected organ will still be preserved. As we see, this architecture of the kidney is still preserved even if there is a, a infection. But for the case of brain, we see that the architecture of the of the organ is affected. We see that there is liquefaction dissolutions of the part of the brain. Now also the third one is Kesha's necrosis. As this one is manifested within the tibilations in the lungs. As we see this is the part of the necrosis within the lung. This one we call the Kesha's necrosis. Uh, in other words, Kesha's necrosis, it means it is cheese-like, cheese-like, yes, cheese-like. Other types of necrosis, there is a fatty necrosis and the gangrenous necrosis. Let's see about the fatty necrosis. The fatty necrosis is commonly manifested in pancreatitis especially acute uh, pancreatitis. As you see this uh, picture, this one, is the, we see there is an area of white chalk deposit uh, that, uh, that represents four foci of fatty necrosis. This one, a fatty necrosis, fatty necrosis, and this one, a fatty necrosis, fatty necrosis. But uh, these are accompanied with the calcium soap formation, we call it the saponification at the site of lipid breakdown in the main center. Uh, this was just uh, the definition of patterns of necrosis in the tissues. We have seen that in the, in the, uh, in the coagulative necrosis, the outline of the dead cell or affected organ is still maintained in the tissue. It means it's still the same. For example, in the myocardial infection, in the kidney infection, yes. But for the case of liquefactive, I said that the dead cell undergo disintegration and the affected uh, tissue is liquefied, as we have seen in the cerebral infection. For the case of Kesha's necrosis, it means uh, there is a cheese like, as I have said, an example in tuberculosis lesion. But for the case of fatty necrosis, as I have shared you from the diagram about the. Uh, Means there is endematic. It means there is endematic digestion of fatty, and uh, that's why you see there is a deposition of uh, white chalk uh, deposit. Uh, example: necrosis of fatty by pancreatic enzymes in acute pancreatitis, and also in gangrenous necrosis, 
and uh, this is the necrosis that is secondary to ischemia and uh, usually which is superimpose the infections for example necrosis of the distal limb uh, and you just usually occur in the foods and the toes of the uh, diabetic patient that was a little bit about the irreversible uh, cell injury in the part of necrosis so we are going to uh, continue the uh, fifth sessions so don't mean the fifth sessions and welcome again